영어 문서읽기 500번 읽기 도전하고 있습니다. 챕터별로 낭독 나누어서 읽기 하고 있고요. 어, 어제까지 해서 이제 챕터 1 23번 이제 오늘 또 어, 조금 전에 일을 마치고 아, 오전에 일을 마치고 조금 시간이 남아서 예, 그 사이에 또 읽어보도록 하겠습니다. 어, 서문부터 해볼게요. 어제 서문이 잘 안돼서 실수도 많이 하고 했는데 어, 꼭 하기 전에 한 번은 서문을 읽어보고 챕터 1을 같이 읽어 나가 볼수 있도록 하겠습니다. 서문 음, Bonicula Editor's Note The book you are about to read was brought to my attention in a most unusual way. One Friday afternoon, just before closing time, I heard a scratching sound at the front door of my office. When I opened the door, there stood a sad-eyed, droopy-eared dog carrying a large, plain envelope in his mouth. He dropped it at my feet <clears throat> and gave me a soulful glance and, with great quiet dignity, sauntered away. Inside the envelope was the manuscript of the book you now hold in your hand, together with this letter. Gentlemen, the enclosed story is true. It, uh, it happened in this very town to me and the family with whom I reside. I have changed the names of the family in order to protect them. But in all other respects, everything you will read here is factual. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Harold. I come to writing purely by chance. My full-time occupation is dog, and I live with Mr. and Mrs. X, called here the Mourners, and their two sons, Toby, aged 8, Pete, aged 10, and also sharing our home is sharing our home is a cat named Chester, whom I am pleased to call my friend. We were a typical American family. Oh, and still are. Though the events related in my story have, of course, had their effect on our lives. I hope you will find this tale of, this tale of sufficient interest uh, to yourself and your readers to warrant its publication. Sincerely, Harold X. Oh, 어제보다 한길 났네요. 자. 기억에서 멀어지기 전에 자꾸 자꾸 상기시켜줘야 되는 것 같습니다. 그렇게 해야 내 몸에 딱 달라붙겠죠. 그럼 제가 이제 이걸 응용해서 여러 가지 표현들을 조금 더 유려하고 멋있게 할수 있을 것 같습니다. 어, 자 이제 챕터 1 들어가 보도록 하겠습니다. Chapter 1 The Arrival I shall never forget the first time I laid these now tired old eyes on our visitor. I had been left at home by the family with the admonition to take care of the house until they return. That's something they always say to me when they go out. Take care of the house, Harold. You are the watchdog. I think it's their way of making up for, for not taking me with them. As if I wanted to go anyway, you can't lie down at the movies and still see the screen. And people think you are being impolite if you fall asleep and start to snore, or sketch yourself in public. No, thank you. I'd rather be stretched out on my favorite rug in front of a nice whistling radiator. But I digress. I was talking about that first night. Well, it was cold, the rain was pelting the windows, the wind was howling, and it felt pretty good to be indoors. I was lying on the rug with my head on my paws, just staring absently at the front door. My friend Chatter was curled up on the, on the brown velvet armchair, which years ago he'd staked out as his own. I saw that once again he'd covered the whole seat with his cat hair, and I chuckled to myself, picturing the scene tomorrow, next to grasshoppers. There is nothing that frightens a chatter more than the vacuum cleaner. In the midst of this reverie, I heard a car pull into the driveway. I didn't even bother to get up and see who it was 
I knew it had to be my family, Mr. Mon the Monroes. Since it was just about the time for the movie to be over, after a moment, the front door flew open. There they stood in the doorway. Toby and Pete and Mom and Dad Mono, there was a flash of lightning, and in its glare, I noticed that Mr. Mono was carrying a little bundle, a bundle with tiny, glistening eyes. Pete and Toby bounded into the room, both talking at the top of their lungs. Toby shouted, Put him over here, Dad. Take your boots off, You're so you, you are soaking wet, replied his mother. Somewhat calmly, I thought, under the circumstances. But mom, what about... First, stop dripping on the carpet. Would somebody like to take this? Asked Mr. Mono, indicating the bundle with the eyes. I'd like to remove my coat. I will, Pete yelled. No, I will, said Toby. I found him. You will drop him. I will not. You will too. Mom, Pete punched me. I will take him, said, said Mrs. Mono. Take up your coach this minute. But she became so involved in helping the boys out of their coat that she didn't take him at all. My tranquil evening had been destroyed, and no one had even said hello to me. I whimpered to remind them that I was there. Harold cried to Toby, Guess what happened to me? And then, all over again, everyone started talking at once. At this, mo at this point, I feel, I'm, I, feel I must I explain uh, something in our family. Everyone treats everyone else with great respect for his or her intelligence. That goes for the animals as well as the people. Everything that happens to them is explained to us. It's never been just a good boy Harold or used a little box chatter. At our house, oh no, with us it's, hey Harold, dad got a raise and uh, now we're in a higher tax bracket. Or come sit on the bed, Chester, and watch this World Kingdom show. Uh, maybe you will see a relative. Which showed just how thoughtful they are. But after all, Mr. Morneau is a college professor and Mrs. Morneau is a lawyer. So, we think of it as a rather special household and we are, therefore, rather special pets. So, it wasn't at all surprising to me that they took the time to explain the strange circumstances surrounding, it, surrounding the arrival of the little bundle with the glistening eyes now among us. It seems that they had arrived at the theater late and rather than trip over the feet of the audience already seated, they decided to sit in the last row, which was empty. They tiptoed in and sat down very quietly, so they wouldn't disturb anyone. Suddenly, Toby, who the little one, sprang up from his chair and squealed that he had sat on something. Mr. Monroe told him to stop making a fuss and move to another seat. But in an unusual display of independence, Toby said he wanted to see just what he, what, what it was he had set on. An, an, an usher came over to their row to shush them, and Mr. Moon borrowed his flashlight. What they found on Toby's chair was the little blanket bundle that was now sitting on Mr. Moon's lap. They now unwrapped the blanket, and there in the center was a tiny black and white rabbit sitting in a shoebox filled with dirt. A piece of paper had been tied to his neck with a ribbon. There were words on the paper, uh, but the mourners were unable to decipher them because they were in a totally unfamiliar language. I moved closer for a better look. Now, most people might call me a mongrel, but I have some pretty fancy bloodline running through these veins and Russian Wolfhound happens to be one of them because my family got around a lot. I was able to recognize the language as an obscure dialect of the Carpathian mountain region. Roughly translated, it read, Take good care of my baby. But I couldn't tell if it was a note from a believed mother or a piece of a Romanian shit music. The little guy was shivering from fear and cold, 
It was decided that Mr. Monroe and the, and the boys would make, the, make a house for him out of an old crate and some heavy duty wire mesh from the garage. For the night, the boys would make a bed for him in the shoebox. Toby and Pete ran outside to find the crate and Mrs. Murnau went to the kitchen to get him some milk and lettuce. Mr. Murnau sat down, a dazed expression in his eyes, as if he were wondering how he came to be sitting in his living room, his own living room, uh, in a wet raincoat with a strange bunny on his lap. I signaled to Chester, and the two of us casually moseyed over to a corner of the room. We looked at each other. Well, what do you think? I asked. I don't think rabbits like milk, he answered. Chester and I were unable to continue our conversation because a deafening crash commanded our, our attention. Pete yelled from the hallway, Ma, Toby broke the rabbit's house. I didn't. I just dropped it. Pete won't let me carry it. It's too big. Toby's too little. I'm not. You are too. Okay, fellas. Mrs. Murnau called, uh, called out as she entered with the milk and lettuce. Let's try to get it in here with as little hysteria as possible, please. Chester tried to Chester turned to me and said under his breath, That lettuce looks repulsive. But if there's any milk left, I get it. I certainly wasn't going to argue with him. I'm a worryman myself. At that point at that moment, the crate arrived. We are standing the strain of being pulled in two directions at once. Ma, Toby says he's gonna keep the rabbit in his room. That's not fair. Harold sleeps in his room. Only sometimes, I thought. When I know, he's got a leftover ham sandwich in his drawer. Toby's a nice kid, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't hurt that he shared his stash with me. It was, after all, at one of those late night parties in Toby's room that I first developed my taste for chocolate cake. And Toby? Noting my preference, has kept me in chocolate cake ever since. Pete, on the other hand, doesn't believe in sharing. And the only time I tried to sleep on his bed, he rolled over on me and pinned me by my ears so that I couldn't move for the rest of the night. I had a cricket in my neck for days. But he's mine, Toby said. I found him. You sat on him. You mean? I found him. And he's sleeping in my room. You can keep smelling old Harold in your room and Chester too, if you want to. But I'm gonna keep the rabbit in mine. Smelly old Harold? I would have bitten his ankle. But I knew he hadn't changed his socks for a week. Smelly indeed. Mr. Morneau spoke up. I think the best place for the rabbit is right here in the living room on that table by the window. It's a light deer, and he will get lots of fresh air. Peter's taller than I am, Toby cried. He will be able to see the rabbit better. Too bad, Skirt. Okay, said Mrs. Monroe, true, clenched the teeth. Let's put him to bed and make him comfortable. And then we can all get some sleep. Why? Peter asked. I don't want to go to sleep. Mrs. Mullen smiled a little too sweetly at Pete. Look, Ma, said Toby. He's not drinking his milk. Chester knocked me in the ribs. Didn't I tell you? He asked. Excuse me while I make myself available. Hey, said Toby. We could name him. Can they wait until tomorrow? Asked Mr. Monroe. The boy shouted in unison. No, he has to have a name right now. I have to say. I agreed with them. It took them, it took them three days to name me, and, the, and through those were the three most anxious days of my life. I couldn't sleep at all, worrying that they were really gonna call me Fluffy, as Mrs. Murnau had suggested. Well, all right, sighed Mrs. Murnau. What about O Saint Bon Bon? Uh oh, there she goes again. I thought, where did she get them? Yuck, we all said. Well then, how about Fluffy?
she opened hopefully. Peter looked at his mother and smiled. You never give up, do you, Ma? Meanwhile, Chatter, who had also been named Fluffy for, uh, for a short time, was rubbing against Mrs. Mono's ankle and purring loudly. No, Chester, not now, she said, pushing him aside. He wants, to help, uh, he wants to help us name him, don't you, Chester? Toby asked. As he scooped it home, he scooped, it, scooped him up into his arms. Chester shot me a look. I could tell this was not what he had in mind. Come on, Harold, Toby called. You've got to help with the name to him. I joined the family and the serious thinking began. We all peered into the box. It was the first time I had really seen him. So this is a rabbit. I thought he sort of looks like a Chester, looks like a Chester. Only, uh, only he's got longer ears and a shorter tail and a motor in his nose. Well, said Pete. After a moment, since we found him at the movies, why don't we call him Mr. Johnson? There was a moment of silence. Who's Mr. Johnson? asked Toby. The guy who owns the movie theater? Pete answered. No one seemed to like the idea. How about the Prince? said Mr. Monroe. Dad said Mon Toby. Are you kidding? Well, I had a dog named the Prince once, he replied. He replied lamely. Prince, I thought, that's a silly name for a dog. We found him at a Dracula movie. Let's call him Dracula, Toby said. That's a stupid name, said, uh, said Pete. No, it's not. And anyway, I found him, so I sh I should get to name him. Mom, you're not gonna let him name him, are you? That's a favoritism, and I'll be traumatized if you do. Said so Mr. Morneau looked in wonder at Pete. Please, Mom, please, Dad, let's name him Dracula, cried Toby. Please, please, please. And with each please, he squeezed the chest a little harder. Mrs. Monroe picked up the bowl of milk and moved toward the kitchen. Chester followed her every movement with his eyes, which now seemed to be popping out of his head. When she reached the kitchen door, she turned back and said, Let's not have any more argument. We will compromise. He's a bunny, and we found him at a Dracula movie, so we will call him Bunny Killer. Bunny Killer. They should make everybody happy, including me. What about me? muttered the chatter. I won't be happy until she puts down that milk. Well, guys, is that okay with you? she asked. Toby and Peter looked at one another, and then at the rabbit. A smile grew on Toby's face. Yeah, Ma, I think the name is just right. Peter shrugged. It's okay, but I get, but I get to feed him. Okay, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the milk and bag in the fridge. I'm gonna put the milk bag in the fridge. Maybe he will drink it tomorrow. What about Chester? Toby said, dropping the frantic cat to the floor. Maybe he would like it. Chester made a beeline for Mrs. Monroe and looked up at her, at her, plaintively. Oh, Chester doesn't want any more milk, do you, Chester? You've already had your milk today. She reached down, patted Chester on his head, and walked into the kitchen. Chester didn't move. Okay, okay, bad time, said Mr. Monroe. Good night, Bunnikula, Toby said. Good night, Count Bunnikula, Pete said sarcastically, in what I took to be his attempt at a Transylvanian accent. I may be wrong, but I thought I saw a flick of movement from the cage. Good night, Harold. Good night, Chatter. I licked the Toby good night. Good night, Harold. Good night, Chatter. I licked the Toby good night. Good night, Smelly Harold. Good night, don't Chatter. I drew it on Peter's foot. Mom, Harold drew it on my foot. Good night, Pete. Mrs. Murner said with great finality as she came back into the living room. And then more calmly, good night, Harold, good night, Chester. Mr. and Mrs. Murner went up the stairs together. You know, dear, Mr. Murner said that was very clever. But Nicola, I could never have thought of a name like that. Oh, I don't know, Robert, she smiled as she put her arm through his. I think a prince is a lovely name, too. The room was quiet. Chester was still sitting by the closed kitchen door in a state of shock. Slowly, he turned it to me. I wish they had named him Fluffy.
was all he said. 어, 오늘은 이제 좀 있으면 수업이 있어서 여기까지만 하고 또 저녁에 한번더 해보도록 하겠습니다.